Hi, Thomas. Hope you're well. Um, could you just give us a start with an injury update, please? And um, how much of a boost will the uh, manner of the win at the weekend be going into this match? Because obviously we know when... Um, because it seems like um, your team is very good at playing tournament football, if that makes any sense. Because obviously you don't see many goals and you, you, we know these games will be tight. And so you can take, it seems like you can take a lot of confidence into this match now. Yes, so the, the update on the injuries is uh, very short because it's only Mateo Kovacic whom we are missing. Everybody else is available and everybody else will be in the squad with us for, for tomorrow. <clears throat> and yeah, we we liked the way we deserved this win. And it was, a, like you said, a crucial match again. We had now several matches on highest level because, of course, we play in the most demanding league in Europe. So we have... Um, uh, we have it almost every three days, but in these um, competitions, there are crucial matches, which is very clear. And we delivered and we performed and uh, we showed our skills and, and mentality in all these matches. And uh, we played in Tottenham, Liverpool, and, and, and you know it like I know it, and, and Atletico and, and Porto and so on. And again, now against West Ham, it's, it's the best way to arrive and uh, in a Champions League uh, match with a, with a crucial win in your back. It's another experience for us um, that we have in our, in our luggage and it's another good one and it uh, makes the bond very, very strong, very close because uh, tomorrow we need, a, we need clearly a top level team performance uh, when, we, when we fight with Real Madrid for, for the finals. John Cross. Hi, hi, Thomas. I was just going to ask you a bit more about that. That, that you, you, you're so experienced in the in the Champions League yourself personally. What what do you see about that? This group of players and the squad that you have. Obviously, you've got some young players amongst them as well. That, yeah. that you believe that they've got that that big game mentality for even the biggest game against the Real Madrid. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the experiences that we have together. We don't have to talk them into being confident, and we don't have to convince them as a coach. Uh, we try to, but it's so much easier if you have the experience actually together. And this is what I feel every match. I feel that we, we, we are able to play on a very high level. We are, if, if it's not possible to play our nicest match, we are always able to, um, to, to not let the opponents play their best match, which is also a definition of, um, of performance, to not let the others perform. So, um, we have a strong bond. I feel a strong bond within the squad. So it's it's I feel us very, very um, involved in, in to physically in the games, ready to work together, to suffer together, and uh, when it's needed to to respond to the questions. If it's necessary to fight, to fight. If it's necessary to run, to run. If it's uh, the moment to show your skills and uh, escape pressure with passing or, or be dominant. We have uh, in every match uh, moments where we can do this. Yeah, and uh, the level is so high, but, but it's uh, in, if you arrive in semi final in Champions League. But like I said, um, we, uh, I, we, 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 we should not expect crazy things from us, but the same, the same again on, on, on the highest level. The, the, the good thing is we have the experience together. We had uh, tough matches, tight matches. Uh, very important matches in our in, in Premier League and FA Cup. So uh, we feel that it's a good moment to play this match and we want to play hungry, we want to play adventurous and maybe a bit of a lack of experience in, in semi-final to, to compensate with, with hunger and enthusiasm. Diego Plaza. Diego? Buenos días, eh, señor Tuchel, eh, Diego Plaza, del Chiringuito. Good afternoon. After Seferin's threats to Real Madrid, people in Spain are talking about how that could influence the refereeing in the game tomorrow. How do you see the whole controversy regarding this game? I, 
I trust 100% in, in the refereeing and in UEFA and in the, in the competition. And I trust the 100% that every referee UEFA sends and UEFA on this level. We need the best refereeing because it's very, very difficult. And I trust 100% uh, in, in uh, that the referee will, will try to, to whistle the best match possible. I could not imagine that there is any there is any advantage or disadvantage because of a political sports political discussion and I don't want to even think about it because uh, it does not exist in my mind. Damesh, Sky Sports News. Hi there Thomas. Um, Zinedine Zidane has twice said this week that it would be absurd if Real Madrid had been thrown out of the Champions League. Now if Chelsea City and Madrid had been expelled I just want to know what your take would have been. Could you have had any complaints? There's a lot of if in your questions. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we deserve to be in the semi-final, like Real Madrid deserves to be in the semi-final, and we don't deserve because of political decisions or because of influence or because of size or, or, or nice shirts or because of our logo. We deserve because we came a long way. and. Uh, Obviously, I was part since the knockout. Uh, I, I had um, the luck to be part uh, since the knockout phase. And uh, all teams have come a long way and they fought their way through on, on, uh, on sportive results and they fought their way through in the toughest competition in Europe. So, of course, we deserve to play a semi final. Uh, if, uh, if, if problems exist on a sports political level, then it has to be solved on, on, on this level and not. Uh, and, and, and not uh, during a competition which is not which is not affected because uh, right now we deserve uh, through the competition to be there and that's why we are we are um, full of confidence and uh, looking uh, forward to, to play these matches on the highest level this is what we all dream about when we are kids James Sevundra. Thomas the results have been so impressive since you've been in charge so far but do you think your side will need to go to a new level to beat Real Madrid over these two legs? Maybe the next level is to keep the level. Um, sometimes it's like this, don't drop, don't drop the level. And uh, I, I strongly believe in our squad that we can do this. And I strongly believe that, that, that uh, sometimes in circumstances and uh, playing against a big experienced uh, team and a huge club in European uh, competition like Real Madrid, Maybe the next step is to keep the level and not to over expect from us to doing the next step because I truly believe that we showed in Tottenham, in, in Liverpool, in the, in the knockouts against Porto and, and Atletico uh, um, that we are capable of, of uh, consistently producing high level football and in, in all questions that are asked on the pitch in offensive terms and defensive terms and in transition, offensive, defensive. So and uh, the challenge is for me more to produce it again and, and to, 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 to keep the level up. Uh, um, and this is more the question than, than adding another step to that. Not necessary. Jacob Steinberg. Hi, Thomas. On a, on a personal level, you started coaching at, you know, fair, a long time ago, a fairly low level in Germany. Did you at any point when you were doing that ever think that you might be in a Champions League semi-final against... Real Madrid and you know does that kind of for you sum up the the beauty of sport the, the beauty of this <laughs> oh, no I'm the example uh, well I'm a pretty lucky guy pretty lucky man and I know this and um, I'm very thankful and very grateful with all the luck that I had and with all the people at my side who pushed me who believed in me and um, who gave me all the the experience that I had and, and uh, that made me the, the coach that I am today uh, when I started in, in academy football, it was uh, every day was, was, was a gift and every day I enjoyed every day with my under 14 in, in Stuttgart and later it was an under 15 and then it became an under 19 and then it was the step to only be coach of an under 19 full in charge and don't need to work uh, in any other job. This was, this was already a big, big gift and I could never imagine that, that uh, 
um, uh, a manager in Bundesliga has the has the guts and and the courage to let me coach your first division team because that was very very unusual in this uh, at this moment without any without having uh, myself played a game on the very highest level. So yeah, I'm grateful. But um, on the on the other hand, it felt always very natural. It felt it felt always um, natural and it felt always like a big competition. It, it felt always to me right to be in that place, not because I earned it, not because I deserved it, <clears throat> but it came, it came naturally to me. And I'm very grateful for all the people who helped me for, of course, first of all, for my, for my family and then for, for everybody around me in, in coaching and the academies and, and on my way through professional football. Honestly, I have uh, every week a lot of doubts about what we do, how we play, can we can we keep the momentum going? So I I never had these thoughts where, where this should end and where it could end up. And uh, it's uh, like I said many times, I'm very grateful for for having the possibility to to experience um, this on this high level and to to arrive tomorrow, such a great club and such a great uh, team in semi-final of Champions League uh, again, it's the second time and I, I, I'm far from taking it granted. I'm far from uh, having uh, the opinion that this belongs to me and this is a, a whatever and I deserve this and nobody else. No, no, this is, uh, um, I'm a lucky man, like I said, I'm uh, very happy to, to be there and um, it's, a, it's an obligation at the same same time to, to give my very best and to go to, to to, to be uh, fully on tomorrow. John Southall. Hi, Thomas. Um, I just wondered what you made of the new Champions League format and also on the game. How big a challenge is this for you personally to try and tactically plot a route to the final against uh, Zinedine Zidane? I, I, I didn't get the second question. The first one was about the, the format. The, 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 for the new format for the Champions League, what you made of that and also the second I'm not sure. I'm not, if maybe I start with this. I'm not sure if I like it because I can only see more games out of it and more games in a schedule that we have. Uh, it's very hard for me to be excited at all. And um, all these discussions about Super League um, made forget that we have uh, um, that we have now a new format of Champions League very soon. Did they ask any about uh, uh, any, any coach about this? I don't think so. They did not ask me. Did they ask any player about it? I don't think so. So we have so many new formats and we have a Nations League and we have a new, I think, World Championship for, for, for clubs coming soon. There's so many new stuff and so much more games and we have more teams in the European uh, Championship in summer. It's just more and more and more and more games. It's not more quality, it's just more games. Who should play these games? And at the same time, we have three, three substitutes here in, in Premier League and the toughest competitions. No, I'm not happy about this format, not at all. Uh, but you know, I, I was <laughs> I was not involved in it. Um, second one, plotting the strategy to beat Zidane. The strategy, yeah. <laughs> Be ourselves. It's the strategy. Once you arrive, uh, the, the higher you you climb on on the level, rely on yourself, rely on your strengths, and uh, do the things that make you comfortable. And uh, which are proven that they work and we had we have these things as a team and this is what we try to do on the best level there's no other approach for, for, for a match like this hopefully we don't overthink it hopefully we don't uh, we don't want to overdo it as uh, the challenge is to be ourselves and to be the best version of ourselves for for 1994 minutes tomorrow in madrid radio marker Unmute yourself. I wanted to ask you about Eden Hazard. Have you spoken with some of the members of your squad about Hazard? And would you prefer to play Real Madrid without Hazard? <laughs> um, well, Eden is a is a top quality player. I mean, he was the key the key the key player here uh, for many many years in this club and in this league, which is like like I said, one of the hardest in the world and uh, a tough a tough one if you decide matches. 
so consistently like Eden did uh, for this club here. So I have the biggest respect for him. Of course, we talk a lot because he's a, he's a big player for this club. And of course, we have uh, many people here the staff know him very well. And uh, it's not only that we talk about him because uh, because we play him, but we talk about the experience and how, how this club grew and, and about the experience and the big games they had and, and the clashes they had in the league and in Europe. And like I said, he was a key player uh, in, in, in for this club. Now he's, he plays for Real Madrid and obviously he's, 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 uh, he's fit and he had a comeback in the, in the last game for some minutes to be, to be ready tomorrow. If he plays, I'm pretty sure he will. He wants to make a point and wants to prove. Let's see. Um, let's see. Do I prefer with him, without him? No. I, they can leave the spot open. I have no problem with that. Um, and, and 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 play with ten. They will not do this. So um, there are so many quality players. We talk about Real Madrid, and uh, we we have to face uh, we have to face the challenge with with confidence. Okay, time for two more before we move on. James Bench. Hi, Thomas. Um, in the Champions League and in the Premier League, there's been a real noticeable improvement in how, in the XG that you've been conceding, in the touches you've been allowing in your opponent in your own box. Um, I mean, particularly XG. I think you've only had two games where that figure's been over one in the Premier League and Champions League. What exactly did, did you put this down to? Because it was quite an immediate shift that has stayed pretty constant, whoever has played in the defence. Most important uh, quality, quality and commitment of the players. Um, quality explains itself, commitment. Am I ready to do the things uh, which are necessary to do um, to help my teammate, to cover my teammate when he's going into a challenge? Do I play my role 100% reliable? This is the commitment. Can the defensive guys rely on the midfielders? Can the midfielders rely on the strikers? This is a clear yes in all the games. This is a huge effort that we that we put in in the games physically into defending. We do this. Uh, then the next one is courage. We play very brave. We defend up front. Never forget. Sometimes it's the best defense to have the ball. So it comes also down on uh, ball possession, quality of ball possession. Uh, quality of counter pressing for good counter pressing you need to be brave up high to you need to be brave up high the pitch you need to position yourself very disciplined to to not allow too many counter attacks and in the end it's about yeah also about commitment to block shots and to to, to really have the mentality the mentality to 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 not allow shots on goal then uh, we have good goalkeepers in the end and uh, like you said, we are very happy with the numbers because we produce these numbers regularly and, and the clean sheets feel well deserved. Um, it's like attacking, it's, it's a team effort and it will always stay like this in football, which is the good thing. And we are ready for another one tomorrow. Last question for Thomas, Andy Dillon. Hello, Thomas. How are you? Good. Good, good. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, I, I very much appreciate that yourself and your players were kind of caught in the crossfire of the, the Super League and all the fallout of it. So I, I just wonder, do you have any kind of um, a message to sort of maybe neutral English fans who would normally support Chelsea, but in the wake of all this, they might, they might put their patriotism to one side and might not be supporting Chelsea. I just wondered if you had any kind of message for them, for those people that might you know, want to see Chelsea fail as a result of this. Really, do you think that? And and they want to see us fail against Real Madrid because they were not part of this. So <laughs> no, that's why I'm asking you. That's I'm just asking for your expertise, please. Yeah, but, come on, eh? we all did mistakes. And uh, if you if you lead a club and if you own a club, you can make uh, decisions that not everybody understands and not everybody likes. This is this is part of life, but it does not change the the love for the game. I can just tell everybody that I love this game. Uh, so so much and like everybody in the dressing room uh, the boys are so 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 happy out there on the pitch with a smile so so excited about uh, tomorrow's game semi-final we need all support to make uh, to, to, to to be able to to overcome this huge step and um, and in these two games so uh, put your anger to the decision put your anger to to the way the decision was presented well, well understood and um, absolutely fine for me.
but don't put it on the team and don't put it on the on the and, and never doubt the love uh, that that all of the, all, all people here at Cobham and, and I'm sure in all other clubs uh, don't doubt the love that that everybody has for for this game and you will see all the passion and and tomorrow on the pitch again. Okay, we'll leave it there for Thomas. Please stay on the call to hear Christian Pulisic. He's coming up right away. <laughs>